Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the lead code question random points in non-overlapping rectangle. Alright, so in this question we're given a list of non-overlapping axis aligned rectangles. Write a function pick which randomly and uniformly picks an integer point in the space covered by the rectangles. So in this question there's two uh, key words that you really need to understand in order to actually solve this question. So the first one is non-overlapping. So how many other rectangles were given? These rectangles are non-overlapping. So they're not on top of each other. One er the area of one rectangle does not uh, cross or intersect with the area of another rectangle. So that's one of the first things we have. And the second really important point is the word uniformly. So over here, uh, we have a function pick, which randomly chooses a point and uniformly picks an integer point. So the word uniformly is very important over here. And this word actually changes how we approach this question completely. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start off by looking at how we could solve this question and what possibly could be the best way to solve this. And finally, we're gonna implement it using Python. All right, so... Okay, so over here, I'm going to start off by drawing two very basic rectangles. So over here, I'm going to call this one over here R1. And uh, I know I'm not drawing it on the axis, but the whole point of it is to show you why one method is actually not valid. So this is going to be rectangle 1, and this is going to be rectangle 2. And I know they're not perfect by any means, but what I want to show over here is the fact that R2 is clearly bigger than R1. So what you need to understand is R1 is smaller than R2. As simple as that. And what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to have two lists or sets, right? So the first set is going to include, so I'm going to call this a uh, P1. Sorry. So P1, and it's going to include all of the points inside of R1. So what is this going to look like? We're going to have this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, all the way until we get all of the points inside of R1. So this is going to have a length of x. So we have some um, points, right? And it's going to have a total of x points. So the total number of points are x for rectangle 1. Similarly, let's have all the points for rectangle 2. So in P2, I'm going to store these values. And similarly, we're going to go get all of the points the same way until we get all of them. And over here, you need to notice that we're still going to have points, right? And they're going to be different to P1, obviously. But the fact is that we're going to have more points. And the reason to that is, well, we have a larger surface area or area covering R2, and it's just bigger. So the length of this is going to be Y. And let's define the variables X and Y over here. So uh, I won't give them values yet, but what we know for a fact is that y is going to be greater than x no matter what, since r2 is just bigger than r1. And now what I'm going to do is let's kind of think about what is the most intuitive way to solve this. So what I thought of the first solution is, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a random rectangle. So in this case, I have two choices, r1 and r2. So I'm either going to pick r1 or R2. And after I pick one of them, I'm going to pick a random point. And this actually sounds pretty valid, it sounds like a good option, but this is actually not the case. And we would have to go back to the word uniformly over here. And that's very important. And doing this is not going to give us uniform results. Why is that? Well, so let's take a look at this. What is the possibility that we get a point from P1? So P1 has a total of X points. So one of the points, getting one of those points, is a possibility of one by X. Similarly, when you have P2, what is the possibility of getting one of those points? Well, it's going to be one by Y. And that's because uh, X and Y are different. We have different amount of points. So these over here are actually two completely different probabilities. So uh, by doing this, by just doing our naive approach, we're not going to uniformly distribute all of our points. Just to make this more clear, let's say x has a value of 20 and y has a value of 40. Then in that case, the probability of getting a point from x 
is going to be 1 by 20 versus getting 1 for y is going to be 1 by 40. And obviously, 1 by 40 is lesser than 1 by 20. So now let's see, how could we actually come across this problem and how could we solve it? All right, so to come across this problem we had, we can do one of two things. So let's go through the first solution. And what this is, is basically, as it is, we have two different sets, right? So one for all the points of rectangle one and one which has all the points for rectangle two. So what we could do is we could add these two into one, some sort of super set, right? Which holds both of these subsets inside of, of it, right? And in that way, we're going to have the same probability. And uh, in that method, the probability for choosing one element is going to be 1 by x plus y. So the chance of getting any element is going to be the same. To do that, the problem is you need to add all of the possible points for rectangle 1. And you also need to add all the possible points for rectangle 2. And that could actually add up to being a lot of points. So that's going to take up a lot of memory. So let's look for a better solution. So the answer to solve this is to use something called weighted probabilities. So for x over here, we have a value of 20 and y has a value of 40. So let's start off with the very beginning. What is the possibility that we get one point from P1? Well, it's just going to be 1 by 20. And the possibility that we get one point from P2 is 1 by 40. Okay, so now let's look at its complete, just so the overall probability. And to do that, we need to find what is the total number of points we have. Well, it's just going to be 20 plus 40, which equals to 60. So 60 is the total number of points we have. And now let's calculate for P1, what is the probability from 60 points that we get P1? And the answer to that is, well, it's 20 by 60, which is equal to 1 by 3. And similarly for P2, that's going to be 40 by 60, which is, well, it's just going to be 2 by 3. Okay, so now that we have this, these represent the weights. So what we're doing is we're giving rectangle 1 a lower possibility that we choose the smaller rectangle and we're given the big and we're giving the bigger rectangle a higher possibility that we're choosing that rectangle and if that still doesn't make any sense how this might be working uh, let me just show you real quick so uh, let me just get rid of this okay so over here we for p1 to get a single point from p1 we have a probability of 1 by 20 and for p2 to get a single point it's 1 by 40. So what is the weight of P2? It's 2 by 3. So if we multiply this by 2 by 3, and let's say we multiply the value of P1 by its weight, which is 1 by 3. So multiply that by 1 by 3. Over here, you get a value of 1 by 60. And over here, you get a value of 2 by 120, which when you further simplify it, is just 1 by 60. And notice that these two are the exact same values. So what is happening is that by adding this weight, each of the points have the same probability of getting chosen. So this is going to make our search a lot more effective and it's going to give it a more uniformly distributed probability. So let's see how we can do this in code. And I think it's pretty simple once you understand how this actually works or the theory behind it. All right, so let's start off with our code. And before I do that, I want to show you two things. So one of them is that in our rectangles list, we have several different rectangles and this is how each rectangle is represented. We have an x1 comma y1 value and this actually corresponds to the bottom left value. And then we have an x2 comma y2 value which corresponds to the top right coordinate of our rectangle. And another point that I want to point out is the fact that a point on the perimeter of a rectangle is included in the space covered by the rectangle. So the perimeter, whatever, if a point is on the perimeter, it is considered as one of our points. Okay, so keeping that in mind, let's get right into our constructor. Okay, so let's start off by uh, uh, saving the rects, uh, all of the rectangles we have. So self.rects equals to rects, right? And after that, we're going to find out all of the weights. So I'll start off by just initializing an empty list, and we're going to add all our weights to that. And simultaneously, we're going to have a sum. So I'm just going to do sum underscore. And what this is going to hold, it's going to hold the cumulative sum of all of our weights. And this is what we're going to be using for normalizing the values. And if you don't know what normalizing is, it's basically we're taking our values and we're going to convert them from 0 to 1. And we're going to basically get a percentage. Okay, so now uh, this is going to start off with the value of 0. 
And let's iterate through each of our rectangles. So I'm going to do for x1, comma, y1, comma, x2, comma, y2 in rects. So over here, we're, sorry. So over here, we're actually going through each of our rectangles. And what we're going to do is our first step is going to be to find out the number of points that are possible in a rectangle. Well, how could we find this? Well, it's pretty similar to our area function. We take x2 minus x1. So we take the, sorry, length, and we multiply that with the width. Sorry, I meant to say this is the width, and we're going to multiply that with the length. So in this case, y2 minus y1. Well, this is just our area. And one thing we really uh, need to be careful about is the fact that we can include the parent meter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a value of 1 for our width and for our height in order to include the points on our parameter. So now with this, we're going to do one of two things. First, we're going to append this value to our weights. So self.weights.append, and we're going to append num points. And we're, and we're also going to do one more thing, which is that we need to add this value to our sum. So self.sum underscore plus equals to, uh, well, num points. Okay, so now we got, okay, so we're going to iterate through all of our rectangles. And at the end of this, we're going to have our weights. And just to show you, let's just do print self.weights. And one more thing we need to do is now we need to normalize those values, right? Which is to get those values down from uh, values between 0 through 1. And how are we going to do that? Well, we can just use list comprehension to do that. So self.weights, we're going to change its value. And uh, I'm going to do x divided by self.sum, since that's the cumulative sum, for x in self.weights. Sorry, I can't type. Okay, there we go. Okay, yeah, for x in self.weights. And now, again, let's print self.weights, and let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm just going to click pass over here, and let's run our code. Okay, so as you can see, we first got 4, 3. So basically what that means is our first rectangle had 4 points, second rectangle had 3 points, and after that, we normalize those values. And basically what it's saying is that the first rectangle now has a weight of 57%. So it's given a higher weightage since it's a bigger rectangle. And the smaller rectangle, the second rectangle, is given a lower weightage of 42.85714%, which is smaller since the rectangle itself is smaller. Okay, so now that we have this, we can move on to our next function, which is the pick function. I'm going to get rid of the print statements. Okay. So in our pick function, our first step is going to be to choose our rectangle. And to do that, we can use the random module in Python. So let's start off by importing that. So import random. And over here, we need to pick one of our rectangles randomly. But we also need to make sure that we account the weights. And to do that, all we can do is we can do random dot choices. So we can use the choices method. And we need to give this a few parameters. So one of the parameters that we need to give it is the population. So our population is going to be what we want to pick a value from. And in this case, we want to pick a rectangle. So we're going to give it a list of all of our rectangles. And we're also going to give it the weights. And in this case, weights is just going to be self.weights. And we also are going to give it a k value, which is going to start off, we're going to give it a value of 1. And what k value basically means is that it's how many outputs we want. We just want one rectangle, so we're just going to give it a value of 1. And we're going to index at the 0th, uh, whatever is at the 0th index. Okay, and just to show you how this looks like, let's print rectangle. And actually, I'm going to remove this thing of the 0th index, uh, just to show you furthermore why we're going to the 0th index. So I'm running our code. And for each iteration, we're going to have one of these. So as you can see, we got one list. So for each time we call the pick function, and note that it might be confusing, why do we have so many? Well, that's because we call the function one, two, three, four, five times. So we have five different lists, each corresponding to one of the occurrences. And each time we're picking a randomly based uh, rectangle based upon our weights. So these are the rectangles that we ended up choosing. And, and this is also why we're indexing to the zero with element because, well, it's a list inside of a list. Okay, and just to show you, uh, let's run it again. And you should notice that, like, as you can see here, the rectangles that were chosen are, again, completely different now. So it's completely random. 
Okay, so now that we've got our rectangle, let's iterate through each of the points inside of it. So we've got x1, we've got y1, and then we've got x2, and then y2, and that is equal to rectangle. Okay, and now that we have this, we, can, we need to come up with two random values. So we're going to come up with a random x value, and we're going to also come up with the y value. And just to save space, instead of storing them in a variable again, let's just direct, directly return that. So what is our uh, x value going to be? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use the randint method from random. So random.randint. And we're going to give it two parameters. We're going to give it x1 and x2. And what this is going to do is going to pick a random integer between and including x1 all the way to x2 and including x2. So we're going to get a random integer between that and that uh, between the two x boundaries. So that's going to be our x value. And for y, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do random.randint. And we're going to find something from the y value. So y1 and y2. So anything between those two bounds, we're going to find a random integer. And this should be it for our solution. So let's submit this. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. And finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know what you thought about the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helped you. Thank you.